Reading with your kids. Hola, Niho, Kunichiwa, Assalamu alaikum, Shalom, Mahaba, Muni Muli Wanji, Namaste, Jambo, Bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. We are coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville, and it is so beautiful. In the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts, we are so delighted and so wicked happy that you are joining us in our mission to help families grow closer through reading. Please be sure to subscribe to the show on the iHeartRadio app, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, wherever you find your podcast. And please tell your friends all about the show. We have two wonderful guests for you today, the author and illustrator of The Treehouse Story, Jessica Gold and Sanghamitra Dasgupta. Before we invite our guests into the studio, we want to let you know that this episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast is brought to you by DareToDreamBook.com. I have a couple of questions for you. Have you always wanted to be an author? Do you know that your voice and your message, do you know that they matter? Do you have an inspirational story of how you found the courage to reconnect with a long lost goal or a dream? If you answered yes to any of those questions, please visit daretodreambook.com. Become a part of this unique collaborative multi-author book project. And fulfill your dream of becoming an author and getting your message out to the world. Our good buddy, G. Brian Benson, is part of this real unique and really uh, fun project that can help you make your dream come true. Check it out today. DareToDreamBook.com Hey, we also want to invite you to connect with us on social media, facebook.com slash reading with your kids at reading with your kids on Instagram at reading with your kids on TikTok and at gently magic on Twitter. We would also love, love, love for you to go to our website, reading with your kids.com. Please sign up for our free newsletter. We are revamping it. We're relaunching it. You are going to love it. And you can also check out our blog by clicking on the Parents Click Here button at the top of the page. And, and you can also use the Contact button that's at the top of the page to send us a message. Let us know what we're doing well. Let us know what we could be doing better. And please let us know who you would like to hear on a future episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Ah, oh, we're really, really excited. Our guests are on opposite sides of the world from each other. So excited. Uh, we're here today to speak about a brand new book. It's called The Treehouse Story. Please welcome to the show from New York State, the author Jessica Gold, and from the nation of India, the illustrator Sanghamitra Dasgupta. Hey, my friends, how are you? Uh, thank you so much for having me here, and it's such a pleasure being here. Thank you very much. That first yeah, voice I was know. same here. That first voice was Jessica, and I stepped on our friend Sangamitra. Sangamitra has actually been on the show a couple of times in the past. She is an incredibly talented illustrator and was actually the illustrator of my uh, my children's book, the, uh, the Love That I Matter to You. So it's great to see you again, Sangamitra. Same here, sir. It's been a long time we had spoken like yeah. over like Zoom or something like that. Yeah. Well, welcome back. First, Jessica, tell us all about the Treehouse Story, please. Well, it's an absolute pleasure to talk about it. Um, I've been a teacher for 25 years and very inspired by children's books, and especially children's pictures books. And one of the greatest pleasures I ever have is sitting with students or sitting with my own children and just sitting and reading. So a lot of the books that I was trying to write, and I have a few coming out, have to do with families and family values and the Treehouse story was actually inspired by my 18-year-old son driving me one day, which, as many parents know, is not the easiest to sit there as you're clenching your fists on the, um, you know, on the side, hoping they, they do well with their driving. And we had a, ta- a conversation, and he was saying to me, Mom, it was after track practice, I'm so hungry. I, what, what are we having for dinner tonight? And I said to him, oh, let's talk. Let's see what we're having. He stopped at a light, and I'm looking around, and I noticed there's a treehouse on our drive home. And I see children happily playing. And I just took a little note on my phone, treehouse, children happy. 
And I said, oh, wow, that's just such an inspirational thing. We got home, and the phone rang, and it was my in-laws from Florida calling. And I started to say to them, oh, you know, I'm starting to write children's books, and, you know, I'm just trying to think of ideas. I looked at my phone, Treehouse, listened to my phone conversation, grandparents, and put the two together to form a book. So the Treehouse story has a lot to do with a grandfather actually telling a story to his grandchildren of when the father was a boy. And the father was just your typical um, 10-year-old boy who shared a room with a friend. He actually shared a room with his brother, who was his friend. And one was neat, one was messy. That came from my sister and I. She was the neat one. I was the messy one. I have to admit it and fess up to that. And the story has to do with um, the young boy saying to his father, I can't live with my brother anymore. He's too messy. I have to do something about this. And then morning, at 10 years old, asking for his own apartment. And, of course, the father says, no, you have to learn to, get, learn to get along with your brother. And the boy takes it upon himself to go to a neighbor who runs a lumber yard and offer to cut the lawn and weave the driveway in exchange for some lumber to build a treehouse. So that's where the whole inspiration came from. And the grandfather's telling the story of these children's own parent and what he did. And he actually built the treehouse. And the treehouse became almost like um, – a wonderful place where he would go with his friends. He even proposed to his wife in the treehouse. And the treehouse had a lot of heart in its own. And what eventually happens is uh, the kids turn around and say, well, we want a treehouse. And then the family turns around with the grandfather and they build one together to keep the tradition alive. So it's just a sweet story. And I have to say my illustrator is was amazing. She's here with me now. Took the story, took that manuscript and adapted it so incredibly beautifully with her illustrations and pictures and brought this book to life. Wow. And the book has so much meaning. So no, thank you for letting me share that. Well, that's really wonderful. I'm, I'm interested saying Um, India is a beautiful country, but it's very different than the United States. Um, we don't see tree houses everywhere, but there are two or three tree houses in, in our little neighborhood of Boston. And you see them in a lot of suburban neighborhoods. Is it tree house? something that is common in India and is so was it easy for you to kind of envision and create or did you have to really kind of dig down to imagine and and, and recreate this for, for the book uh, no actually there is no tree house in India you will never see any kind of a tree house anywhere like any in any other state of India so I have to do a research on them after getting that manuscript because how it's look, how I should make it like a kid friendly, uh, like a very cool looking tree house, which kids will love and all. Because we never even saw till day, till today, there is no tree house in India. It's, it's not in our culture. Like here, it's like only houses, but mm-hmm. no tree houses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Jessica, yes. th- what was it like when you first received your first author copy of the book and you saw your story in print and you saw the story, uh, you know, come to life through Sanghamitra's illustration. Um, it was a crying moment. <laughs> it really legitimately was because, you know, it's, it's something that you always want to achieve. And as a writer, as a teacher, um, part of the joy is sharing stories with the children and to actually have one, be accepted by a publisher to say this is good enough to put out there and then to have a matching amazing illustrator come together with it to actually see it. It was a tearful moment and a one that I just kind of took in and, you know, then I, of course you text the world about it (laughs) and you let the world know and you do a big shout out, but it it was funny because my children were the, the biggest fans and my husband were, it was finally validation. They've heard the stories, they've read them. I've shared them. But I think the greatest joy was hearing my son and daughter say, Mom, look what you did. Look what you did. And that was just the moment that was a pleasure. Another amazing moment was my first time I brought the copy to a public library locally. And that was a dream. It was a childhood library that I always went to as a kid. And now I was able to bring my book in. And I stood in front of there to have my children take a picture of me in front of it, just to say, this was the ultimate dream I ever wanted to do. I want my book out there for kids to enjoy. And it was a great moment. Yeah. Absolutely great moment. I, th- this idea of, of having your dream fulfilled. I, I want to talk to you both a, a little bit about that more, but before we do, Jessica, you shared with us that you're a teacher. Yes. As a teacher, 
tell us how and, and remind us how important it is for parents to read and continue to read with their kids, not only when they're four and five years old, but to continue to read to and with our kids and co-read with our kids as they become independent readers, as they get into fourth and fifth grade, into middle school, and even into high school. Reading is a confidence builder. That's the one thing I can say. When a child achieves their goal of being able to decode or to learn to read, um, that is a skill Education is something no one can ever take away from you. So to have that ability to learn to read is a gift. And to have that ability to be able to share the love of reading is a bigger gift. It's one that carries on. You can sit there as a teacher and sit there and pointing to words and have the child decode. But when the child understands what they're reading and then gets excited and wants to talk to you and have things grow. I just read a story to my students about Pele. And my students could not wait to share their experiences of playing soccer of being with their mom and dad, of going to a soccer game, of traveling and seeing a soccer game, of learning a new skill, learning a new sport. If reading opens the door for so many family discussions and so many discussions amongst children themselves, Um, children love to gather in front of you on a carpet and have you read and share a story. It's the moment when children suddenly become quiet and the world opens up and their imagination opens up. You really, as the writer, and you have the ability to just launch so many different things with the kid's imagination that you could never have dreamed of. And um, honestly, a parent reading with a child, what a greatest gift in the world. When I'm putting this book, book out and trying to promote it, I'm saying it's a moment to talk about family traditions, to honor your family members, extended family, talk about grandparents in it. And it's a moment to also sit down with your child and sketch a treehouse. You can take any book and you can you can extend it to some kind of activity for growth, knowledge, and interest and imagination. So how important is it to read with your child or in sight reading? I think it's probably the most one of the most important things in the world right now. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that's hopefully that's one of the things one of the many things that we learned from the pandemic is that time that we spend together with our kids is so very, very precious. And and if we choose to spend that time um, uh, reading and sharing stories with kids, um, they'll be much richer for it. Oh, absolutely. It's it's gold. It's gold. Reading is gold. That's yeah. the one thing I want to say to you. It really is. It's priceless. Now, Jessica, you shared with us how excited you were when you received your first published book in your hand and it made you cry. And that's really wonderful. Sanghamitra, I know that um, I'm, I'm not sh- sure exactly the number uh, that the Treehouse story is for you, but I- I'm, I'm guessing that you have literally illustrated hundreds of books. Am I close to being right? 650. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Amazingly talented. So when, when you... Obviously, you, you, it's been a while since you had that first book in your hand that, that you illustrated. Yes. Do you still have the same thrill when... Um... Yes. I am always excited. I am always excited whenever I book an order for a book like uh, on the Amazon. And unfortunately, recently, there are some issues happened with me on Amazon. So before that, I think the last book that came is The Treehouse for <laughs> me last month. Wonderful. I got my copy. I got my copy and I was extremely excited till the day I get the copy in my hand and I was super excited. I told my mom, look, the copy finally has arrived and I was showing on my Facebook also. I think also on my Instagram, I was sharing everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. It's 650 books. You almost have enough books written uh, that you could build a treehouse out of books. Yes, of course. <laughs> Um, what is it, Sangamito, what's your favorite type of book to illustrate? Uh, any kind of children's book, but I basically love to where kids are like playing, they're having fun, but also there is some social messages, which is very educational for them. Like there is some recent topics, which is, ar- uh, which is happening around. I'm not going like deeply in them, but the topics which can educate the kids they are my most favorite. Yeah, yeah. And you yeah. are also the author of a number of, of children's books, too. We, yeah, we, we five spoke, books. Five, five books. books. Wow. Yeah, yeah. 
That's wonderful. I, I'm wondering, wondering Jessica, uh, uh, you, you mentioned that you have a number of other books that will be published really soon. Um, do, you, do you hope to match Sankhamitra in, in terms of um, writing and publishing 650 books yourself? Oh my goodness, that's quite a goal to accomplish, but I'm very proud of her. She's, she's amazingly talented. I just, I have to tell, say, and thank her profusely. So when I, the minute I saw the, um, the minute I saw my illustrations, they just brought tears to my eyes, how beautiful and how talented she is with everything. Um, yeah, I'd love to match that, but quite a goal to achieve. <laughs> So at, at this point, I'm just very happy with what's coming out. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. Um, Jessica, I hope you don't mind. One of the things you wrote in your notes is that you're the um, mom of two adopted kids. And I mentioned that because, first, I want to thank you on behalf of the world to, for doing that. There is such a need for families to open up their homes um, to adopt kids or to foster kids. There's so many kids that are in need of a forever home, of a loving place uh, where they feel safe. So that you were, uh, the fact that you provided this for, for two kids um, is really important and something that I really want to celebrate and thank you for doing. Well, they have um, given me so much in my life that I can't describe. I'm actually choking up saying it. They have been two of the most amazing children. They've opened my world, opened our heart. My husband, my husband's also adopted. So is my sister-in-law. So adoption has been part of our family. And um, some of my books are dealing with the theme of adoption. Um, so thanking me, oh my gosh, I should be thanking the birth mothers, the adoption agency, the world for just allowing people to be able to expand their families in this way. My, my kids are amazing I, in every which way. And they've been gifts. Yeah. So now, thank you for saying that. Well, you know, I, 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 I say it because I'm really hoping that there may be somebody out there that's listening that is thinking about it. But you know, it's when we love somebody, we're putting it, we're taking a risk every time that we love somebody. And I know that there are people out there who are like, yeah, I, oh, but uh, take it, be, becoming a foster mom, becoming an adoptive mom. Ooh, there's so much risk, and my heart might be broken. And you would say to that person, I would say to that person, oh my gosh, uh, if I had thought twice about it, I probably would have uh, about 10 more kids that I've adopted right now. <laughs> That's how wonderful it's been for our family. My son has a scholarship to college. He's going to college in the fall for um, environmental science management. My daughter just got into honor social studies. Not that those are things to target, but the mere fact is I have two happy, healthy, loving, wonderful, um, involved in sports, music, everything. My husband's an amazing dad. And we just enjoy, we don't need things. We've decided we don't need things. We need experiences. And we go to the beach together with the dog. We go to the parks together. We're, we're just, we've always enjoyed just our family time. And I think that's a lot of my inspiration. We're very wholesome. I'm going a minute. We're just a very wholesome family. And I enjoy that aspect of um, having the family. It's always been my dream. So however you form your family is a wonderful thing. And uh, you know, you, you, the cards you're dealt are the cards that you love and you, you love and, tr and cherish and nurture and you just bring them up the best you can and you hope for the best. And right now, uh, what can I say about foster children and adoption? Oh my gosh, please, please, please open your heart. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's the greatest gift ever. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Hey, saying Hamitra, we've talked to you. You said, you shared with us, you've written, illustrated 650 books. You wrote five children's books yourself you in some ways you are helping to raise kids all over the world you're part partly responsible for wonderful moments uh, that families are sharing all around the world do you ever take the time to think that with all those books out there that at almost every moment of the day, there's probably a family somewhere in the world sitting down and reading and sharing one of your books. How does that make you feel? Absolutely. Whenever any author of mine, they share a picture, like kids reading the book, or they are at the library or any kind of book signing events, and kids are coming there, they are like very happy reading a book, or they are buying the copies. It really makes my day. Yeah. That smile on the kid that really helps me to keep going and keep illustrating for the uh, for the kids. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. Yes. And just many, and it's kind of funny. 
that this mm-hmm. is the first interview uh, that we've recorded that I haven't had the giant Reading With Your Kids banner behind me. We, yes. we were just down at the Florida Home School Convention. That banner was down there, seen by 15,000 people. Uh, the, the beautiful family of bears reading together was an illustration that Sanghamitra created for us. Uh, and it's so weird that that it's not up behind me right now. <laughs> So that's 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 really wonderful. Um, I'm excited, uh, Jessica. As as a teacher, um, have you have you shared the book? Have you been able to share your book with your kids? And what's their reaction been? Oh, I have a very supportive district, and they've been very my cheerleaders at this point. And I have to say, my principal's been amazing. And what happened is, I was allowed to share the book with 15 classes, and another teacher did a wonderful job making me a presentation and. I had the um, time to have the students from kindergarten all the way through fifth grade come into an assembly where I presented how the book is put together from um, concept to manuscript to illustrations and putting it all together. And it's inspired a lot of children. I have to say they all um, sketch me tree houses. I shared that with Sammy. It was so wonderful. They all all sketched me in the room. It was great. There's, there's, Images in the hallway of all the tree houses they built. The teacher built a, a tree and had the tree houses in the tree. And the children's reactions, it's, it's very funny. Like a few of them have come up with me to me for an autograph or said to me, can I please come to your room and borrow your book? It's in our school library. And, you know, I just hope that it's inspired. I spoke to um, a scouting troop last week and I received a text saying, the child can't wait. The one thing I said is my dream was to have my book written in on a library shelf. And then I had that student text um, through the parent that they want to write a book to have on a library shelf. And that just touched me deeply. That's all you want to do is inspire. My actual, um, I have a great story for you real quick to share, is that my second grade teacher, when I was a kid, um, actually told me, she entered me in a little contest, and I won like an honorable mention prize. She looked at me and she said to me, you're going to be an author someday. And that stayed in my head. And I found her. She was in Florida, retired. She um, is getting a dedication in my next book. We've stayed in contact now. We're hoping to visit. And she remembered that moment, as did I. So what a powerful moment to have that a teacher could influence you that greatly. And I hope to be that teacher someday that the kids turn around and say, I remember you saying this, or I remember you gave me the confidence to do this. So as educators and as writers, it's a powerful tool we have now to maybe just do some inspiration. So... My, you know, it's been amazing, amazing, amazing presenting it to, to children. That's, That's what I hope to do this summer. That's wonderful. Hey, before we go, Jessica, I know people are going to want to know where they can go to find out more about you and more about the Treehouse story. Oh, uh, thank you. Well, the books right now is on Pennant Publications website, um, and it's also on Amazon. It can be found on Amazon right now. So thank you for supporting me. Thank you for going out there and um you know, thank you for being there with your children to read. And just honestly, I hope this book inspires families to sit down and read together. And, Jed, I want to thank you for all that you're doing for um, putting reading out there for the community. I've actually been a big fan of your um, your podcast as a teacher. And Sanghamitra, just thank you for everything you do to inspire children as well and for all the support. So this has been a great opportunity, and I thank you very much for it. Thank you. But you forgot one website, that is Barnes & Open. The tree house is also available right now. Oh, thank you very much, sure. Yeah, in Barnes and Nobles as well. Thank you. And uh, Sanghamitra, is there a website that folks can go to to find out more about you and the wonderful work that you're creating? Yeah, uh, people can find me on my Instagram, which is uh, Instagram uh, slash creative art shopee, which uh, creative underscore art underscore shopee, S H O double P double E, and then double underscore. Awesome. We've had a wonderful time speaking to the author and illustrator of the Treehouse Story, the illustrator Sanghamitra Dasgupta, and the author Jessica Gold. My friends, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you for everything, and thank you for honestly for more reading. Thank you from my side also. Please be sure to join us for the next episode of the Reading with Your Kids podcast. Our guest will be Tamara Girardi. She'll be here to celebrate why. Daddy, why? That's the next episode of the podcast. Hey, if you're the author of a fantastic children's book, we would love to help you celebrate your book with the world. So many ways that we can help the world know about your book. 
You can be a guest here on the podcast. You can submit your book to our certified great read panel. And you can also take part in our monthly promotion program. Have your book celebrated on the podcast with commercials, messages to our 94,000 plus social media followers, and display your book in our nationwide network of digital pedestrian billboards. Learn how by going to our website, readingwithyourkids.com, clicking on the author's click here button at the top of the page and scrolling down to the various services. I want to thank the folks who made today's show so wonderful. Of course, we're going to start by thanking our guests, Jessica Gold and Sanghamitra Dasakuta. Please be sure to check out The Treehouse. also want to thank our sponsors, daretodreambook.com. Please go there. Let them know that you learned about their project through the Reading With Your Kids podcast. also want to thank my team, Fatima Khan, Rory Grady, Nicole Belcastro, Ashley Contreras, Mirabella Q, Rain Pan. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. Most of all, we all want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always... Thank you so very much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast.